Hi everybody, today we're going to be talking about color chords. Color chords are basically conjunctions of colors that work together harmoniously so you can create appealing designs with them. I'm going to show you how you can achieve this with Affinity Designer. Let's go with it. So color chords are created by first choosing a base color and then you will choose one of the core types that Affinity Designer comes with. So the first mode, it's called complementary and it's based on the color theory. So I'm going to show you how to create the first complementary palette. It's pretty easy and pretty straightforward, but many people don't know this possibility in Affinity Designer. So it will help you out, especially if you're starting out with uh, color theory to create some uh, harmoniously um, built designs. So let's go with the first one. I just uh, chose this crimson red and I have here my second square which I will put the color, the complementary color on based on what Affinity Designer um, proposes me. Okay, so here we have the color panel and under this color, color panel we just have to click on this combo menu on the top right corner and as you can see in here we have add core to swatch in here you're going to find all these possibilities we're going to go through all of them and as i said the first one is complementary the complementary is as it, you can read in here read in here it's the base color and it's opposite on the color wheel okay i'm going to show you now the hsl color wheel which is this one, HSL stands for Hue, Saturation and Luminosity, okay? So as you can see, here is pointing to the color I chose, which is this red, uh, crimson red. So the first thing I want to be doing is creating a new palette. In the swatches panel, I say create palette from document, as document palette, for example. So we have here the colors we see in this document. Okay, I can get rid of these two because I really don't need them for this example. Even this one, I can get rid of it. And now we have this, um, I already have a name for it, which is the name of this document. And now we have this clean palette. Okay, so we come to the color, pa uh, color panel and we go to the option add chord to swatch and we click complementary. Now, as you can see in here, two colors are added. One is the crimson red I had as a base color. And the next one to it, it's the complementary, as we promised here in this example. So to demonstrate this, so you see it clearly, and you see the color wheel, and you see the, the crimson red. Now, you're going to see that this color, as I click on it, it's exactly the opposite on the color wheel. Okay? So this is complementary, the first example. So the next option we have is a split complementary, which is going to be basically taking the base color and upon the opposite, it's going to create two colors more that are adjacent to this opposite in the color wheel. I'm going to show you how it works. So this is the base color. Okay. We come to the color panel. We select the add core to swatch and we select this option split complementary. We click on it and now we can see the base color plus two more. Okay, so that would be this and that would be the blue one. And you can see here we have some harmoniously working colors for your artwork. And again, I want to show you how in the color wheel, this color, the opposite, would be the one we saw before, which is somewhere here. Okay. Now the two colors added are two adjacent to the complementary. So if I click in this one, you're going to see this one is going to land in here. Okay. And this one, another adjacent color to the complementary to the base one, it's going to be there. So this is a split complementary. The second option we have. Now, third option is called analogous. And just as we saw before in, in the second example, this is going to be exactly the same, but instead of the opposite, uh, the complementary color, it's going to be adjacent to the base color. Okay. So again, we select it 
and we go to color we select select analogous we click on it and now we have these two colors which would be as you can see it's presented in like a in a logical way so the base color is this one this one in here and the two accents which would be this uh, purple or magenta and this orange okay so again I want to show you how this is just two colors adjacent to it one is this one and one is this one pretty easy to understand option number four it's accented analogic it has a very weird name but it's also quite easy to understand so as you can read same as analogous but like for complementary includes the base color opposite okay so again we select and say accented analogic we see swatches these colors now we're gonna see how good it works in terms of harmony so we have some pretty nice palette in here and if we select the base color we're gonna see again how we have the base color we have the opposite in the color wheel and two adjacent colors opposite to the base color another nice combination you can take advantage from and when you create your your graphics because as I say, you're not going to have to think much on is this right, is this not. This is color theory. It always works. So the option number five in which you can create a harmonious palette, it's called triadic. And this one is three colors spaced equally around the color wheel starting from the base color. And again, the base color is the crimson red. We select it and please select it always. Otherwise, it's going to, when you create your uh, color card is going to take, if you don't have the base color obviously selected, it's going to create whatever you have here before. Okay, so just summing up, just have it always selected, be sure you have it selected. Now we go to the color panel, we selected the triadic option in here, and as you can see, we have now this green and this blue, Opa. and this blue, we come to the color wheel and you're going to see the distribution of the colors in the color wheel it's um, equally um, separated. So blue in here, green in here, and crimson red in here. Okay, three points. Option number six, the Tradic. It's a little bit more complex than the, one, the ones we saw before. Uh, it's four colors arranged around the color wheel in two complementary pairs, starting from the color base. So again, we select... Opa. Um, we select the color, um, the base color. We apply the tetradic, and we see it here. I don't need this one. So one, two, and three. And again, we can see we have the base color. It's opposite, and the two adjacent one to the opposite, one to the color base. So option number seven is called square. And again, we have um, the base color. This one is going to be four colors spaced equally around the color wheel, starting from the base color. So again, we come to the color panel, we select square. And now we have the base color plus the opposite, which would be this one. And now, two more colors that we're going to see here in the in the color wheel that well base color opposite plus these two which are spread equally in the color wheel so nice combination another one you can use for your projects another one very interesting option it's number eight tints so colors which vary in lightness from the base color, which is the crimson red, to white. And again, we select here tints. We're going to see how it goes from the base color to white, giving it every time more a variation in the lightness. 
So again, we put all the colors and you're going to see how good it works. Well, I not including the white, but anyway, you can see in here how nicely, harmoniously it works. This option, this is number eight called tints. We're going to see the next one. So number nine, it's um, shades. And basically it's the same one we saw before, number eight, but instead of fading to white, it fades to black. So colors which vary in lightness from the base color to black. So again, we add color code, we say shades, we come here to swatches and we have the same example we saw before. So I'm gonna apply some of the colors here so you can see how nice, well, I'm gonna add this two more. So you have the whole spectrum, okay? So nicely harmonious, you can use it like so. One thing I wanted to also mention is that every time I color, I create a color core, I come here to the color panel because it's, you know, it's obvious there. It's easily found, but you can also create your color cores from the swatches panel. Uh, it's just that you're not gonna find it here. You're not gonna really be able to work like this in here. You have to have your base color selected like so, and then you can just apply the same, exactly the same as we do in the color panel. So you choose which one you prefer. I just kind of prefer coming here. I see it more clearly. And so the last option we have is called tones and it's colors which vary in saturation from the base color to gray. And we're going to see how it works again. We select the uh, base color, we come to the list, we select tones, and here we have what it promised, which is this nice combination of color tones and plus two more like this, which should be this one and this one. And you can see how harmonious it is and how well it will work in, in your projects. So basically this is color cards applied to projects. There are many other ways to create color palettes. Um, probably you've seen me using other techniques such as extracting colors from images I like, but these options are really useful. So be aware what you can do with them and use them, okay? Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. And if you didn't, I hope you just had a, you know, nice time or whatever. And don't forget to subscribe, the usual thing. Um, check my portfolio here in Dribbble so you will see what you may be able to create with some study and some experience, okay? So yeah, that's it for today. Subscribe, like, comment. Mwah. Bye.